Hey there everyone, Hadesh here from LearnCodeOnline.in and welcome back again to this awesome amazing JavaScript series. I hope you are enjoying it. If you are enjoying it, do let me know in the comment section below. This motivates me, come on, you can write a comment. So now let's just go ahead and proceed with the further things that we are going to learn in our JavaScript stuff. And one of the stuff which is really key point about any programming language at all is the try and catch. Now so far we have learned that if we get an error right just there at the exact point where the error comes on, the program freezes out and that is actually a good thing and actually a bad thing. Now we want to gracefully handle these errors, we just don't want to shut down the entire program. Imagine if you're using an app and just one feature is not working because of that entire app is being shut down. It's probably a nightmare and we don't want to do that. So similarly, we have options how we can handle these errors. And of course, some of you might have guessed that it's a try and catch syntax. Now, previously, when I used to talk about these try and catch, one place I always used to recommend that if you're making a web request, uh, probably the website is down or you're not getting a proper request back on time, just use a try catch. That's a better option. But uh, surprisingly, we do have another better option now, uh, which is promises, which we are going to talk later on. But just assume, Whenever you're not sure that there might be a potential error, it's always a good idea to use try and catch. So let's just have a simple example of this try and catch, how the entire workflow works with the try and catch. And we're going to just create a simple application, a currency converter, and we're going to see what are the potential fall pits where we can have an error. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we're going to create a new file and in the advance, of course. So let's just call this as try catch dot JS. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple, a simple function which can take an input from user and convert that into, uh, we're going to take input in dollars and we're going to convert that into rupees. So that's a pretty, pretty simple math. So we're going to say, uh, get uh, rupees uh, or maybe convert rupees, convert to RS, that's actually a better thing. And just like we used to do, we can either use a functional or now that we have learned about these arrow functions, we can actually use them. So there we go. This is your arrow functions that you really want to use. And what we're going to do is we're going to take an input. So we're going to call this as a uh, dollar. And we just have to multiply this dollar by 60 to get it into rupees. So as, as simple as it sounds. Now here comes an interesting part that either you can just write a uh, return in all these statements. Let me just write that again because we are fairly new to these uh, arrow functions. So let me just convert that right here. So we can just return and we can simply use dollar and we can just multiply it by like 64 ish. It's always roam around there between 60 and 65. So there we go. And in case you want to shorten down all of these things, so you can just delete this guy. You can also just delete all of this stuff and you can just say something like this. In case you are comfortable right now with these kinds of things, that's totally fine. So this is our function, uh, working fine totally with that. But you know what? This function may have potential a lot of errors. Let me just show you what are these. So let's just say we just, uh, first of all, let's just have a const and we're gonna say uh, my value. So what is the converted value? We're gonna use convert to RS and we pass on a dollar, probably $5. And then I want to log this value, my value. So let's just run this and try to see what things can happen. So there we go. We're going to go into 0, 1 advance. Come on. We're going to go 0, 1 advance. And now we can run this node and try catch. There we go. And there we go. No problem at all. Nothing, nothing at all. But what happens if user don't pass on five or probably pass on something like this? Then obviously, uh, if I run this, uh, notice the multiplication actually went well for this kind of five, but what if a user something goes like this? Now this is not something that we are expecting. We get a null value here or nan value. So we don't want something like this to happen to our program. So we need to rewrite this program a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna just cut it for a moment and we're gonna just use our curly braces again. Now, what I want to do here is I want to use an if and else statement here, okay? And the if and else statement, first of all, I want to check the type of uh, this dollar what is coming up. So if the type of the dollar is actually a number, then only I want to proceed. So if it is equals to number, notice in the previous video talked about that this type of gives you a string value of it, and we are exactly comparing that. 
Okay, once we are getting that, then only I want to uh, actually return this dollar multiplied by 64. So I'm gonna say return dollar multiplied by 64. Okay, otherwise I don't want to run this program. So what I want to do is, in the else case, uh, I can either probably give user a message that, hey, uh, this is not gonna be working, but additionally what I can do, I can throw up an error uh, just like it's a system generated error, something something like that. So I can simply say throw, throw, and there we go. Now in the throw, actually you can throw a literal string that yeah, this is, was the error, but it's not a best practice that if you throw just a string that you can do in the console log as well, so it makes no sense. So what you can do is you can use this error as well. Notice it's a capital error. Uh, it's a description says interface error. It's exactly the same error what we see when we mistype something or something like that. And you'll see that in a minute. And what this error gives you, it gives you a parameter that you can pass on, like something uh, like amount needs to be in number, something like that. So this actually makes much more sense here. Okay, so let's just run this and we're gonna run that. And there we go. Now, you might have seen these kinds of error quite a lot. I make a lot of them. So this is something what we're getting. And the best part about these error, it throws up the line number as well. Uh, like notice we are making a mess at line number five. So this is where it's throwing up the error. And also it gives you that where it was called so that you can fix up that. So notice uh, it says that, hey, uh, we're making at line number 11. So notice line number 11 is actually calling that function. So it gives you a lot more information instead of just throwing up at these things. And right now we have created a very good program which catches the error but throws an error and just freezes our program there. Not a, probably a good idea to have it something like that, uh, but we can do something more better than that. Okay, so what we can do is, we're gonna just comment that down because this is not what we want to do. When we have a potential error, probably you are making a web request. I know again, we are gonna handle the web request using promises, but bear with me, we don't know about promises yet, okay? Just forget about it. So let's just say you're making a web request uh, to get a temperature and your website is down. So you might want to check it out somewhat like that, that whether the website is on, or probably this dollar conversion you're using uh, some of the Google APIs or Yahoo APIs to catch that. So obviously we don't want an error to freeze our program right now here. We just want to have an error and move on there, okay? Uh, so let's just see how we can do that. And for that, we use a try catch. And notice this VS code is really amazing to help such things for me. And uh, let me just have it, the try catch. Notice it just gives you like that boilerplate code. I love that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all of this stuff inside this. So I'm gonna cut that and paste it inside that. I am gonna uncomment this. There we go. And uh, there we go. Makes much more sense. Okay. So we are trying, this is kind of an attempt when everything goes right. But if something goes wrong, you can just have a message here for the error. And what you can do is you can simply have a log, use this error, and notice as soon as I have, oops, come on, control Z, error, and as soon as I hit a dot, notice there are a couple of options that this, this dot can access. Uh, actually, none of the option is displayed what I really want to display here. Uh, that is actually message it has. First of all, let's see what is this error so that you can get more idea what this error is, uh, this one. Usually some people call it just as E, that is also totally fine, but let's just see what happens, okay? Uh, first of all, let's go for uh, the regular stuff. If it is a, just a $5 we want to convert. So there we go, uh, clean the screen, run that again. Everything goes fine, no big deal. And if something goes like this, uh, some, somebody says five in a string, save that. And uh, let's just try to run that. And there we go, we got an error. Now notice, uh, we got an error, uh, okay, that amounts needs to be in number, and uh, let me just show you a couple of good stuff here, okay. And uh, what we are gonna do is, instead of this error, we want to move on. Now, let me also show you one more thing just by printing a log here, that I will not run if program crashes. This is the most important part. So this line, obviously, if we have got an error on line number 11, our program is going to get freeze and this line 17 will never be printed out. So let's just have a clean screen and run that again. And notice, I will not run if the program crashes. So that's the most beautiful part. 
you have got your error but you have also got your program flow to be continuous there and some of you might be getting confused here i can totally agree with you let me just walk you through that when i just copy this paste that directly here and i comment out all of this try and catch block again notice the line 20 will never run if our program actually crashes on line number 9 or 10 okay so let's just see and verify that always a good idea is to run the script whenever in doubt so let's just see and run that and notice this time our line is not being printed so the program flows actually is being freezed just exactly the moment where it hits the error and throws an error something like this okay and with the try and catch uh, what we can do is we can avoid the situation where program actually freezes we don't want to freeze our program yes definitely we want error uh, but we don't want error which can totally freeze our program, okay? So a better approach would be handling these situations using a try and catch block. Now just one more thing, one last thing that we want, I want to tackle down here is sometimes you'll be seeing that people use different variables here in case of error. Sometimes people just like to call it as E, whatever you call that, it's just a variable, call it whatever you like, call that P, call that Z, call that A, whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. So this is all about try and catch. Now here's a quick word. Uh, that again i have i've shared it previously but i want to talk about it one more time now previously we used to do all these try and catch for a web-based request whether that's an api request or anything like that but now we have a better alternative to handle that kind of situation which we are going to learn later on these are known as promises and the chain of promises that we can do uh, but right now i think it is more than enough that we have discussed one topic and it's always a good idea if you have a potential throw up that can cause your program to crash handle it into try catch that's a better approach so that's it for this video and i'm going to surely catch you up in the next one